All right, I'm loaded up on coffee and ready to go. I got some good comments here today, so let's read them and see what we can learn today. Joshua James says, What can you expect from millions of people that think God wants them to lie to children about a character whose name is an anagram for Satan and set up a tree in their house on the day most Antichrist figures in history were born, Julius Caesar, Tammuz, Nimrod. All right, so I gotta, yeah, I think I've had too much coffee. I gotta try to understand the mindset. First of all, I mean, this last one is easy. This here on the day that most Antichrist figures in history were born. Now, you're not getting that from the Bible. Right, but let's go back to the very first line. What can you expect from millions of people that think that God wants them to lie to children <clears throat> about a character whose name is an anagram for Satan and set up in a tree in their house? So my guess is that this is about Christmas. And this is a attack on the birth of baby Jesus. That's my guess. It's not clearly stated, but if I had to guess, I'd say that they want to say December 25th was not the birth of baby Jesus. And what, the, the Antichrist was born that day. and That we're all worshiping the Antichrist because that's the true birthday of the Antichrist or something. That's my guess. I think that's what people say. I don't really follow this stuff, so just bear with me. Um, what I'll tell you is that Jesus, baby Jesus, was born December 25th. Now, Jesus is God Almighty. So He is from everlasting. All right, He's always been. He's He'll always be. And... Um, December 25th, 2022 years ago, he was born of a virgin. He was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, okay? Now, uh, I believe that he, he had to have been born December 25th. People that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ would not have forgotten that and they would have strongly opposed anybody that would try to change that just like it's the year of the Lord now what whether it's 2022 or 1022 that's a little bit different but the fact that we base our year on the birth of Jesus Christ alright it, like it's 2022 AD Anno Domini the year of our Lord Jesus Christ so that's never uh, going away that's never forgotten neither is December 25th forgotten now you want to make the argument that they have mixed their pagan tradition with the tradition of the birth of Jesus Christ, I'm with you all the way. They do that with Easter. It's not, <clears throat> it's not uh, inclusive or whatever to Christmas. That happens on Easter as well. So uh, there's great evidence for that. But uh, I'm not buying the idea that Jesus was not born December 25th because. Let's go to a Bible verse here that should settle this matter. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. All right, so you would have to prove that Jesus was not born December 25th. All right, because it's established that he was born on December 25th, and people recognize December 25th as the birth of baby Jesus 
And in no way in hell are people worshiping the Antichrist when they celebrate the birth of baby Jesus. In your mind, you have to have constant torment thinking that everybody is worshiping the Antichrist on December 25th. Just because you are looking at that as the birth of the Antichrist doesn't make it so. I, I'm pretty strong on this opinion that, that uh, whether people are saved or not saved, I don't know. But I think it's shameful to suggest people think they're worshiping or they're celebrating, excuse me, the birth of Christ. It's shameful to think that they're so that these people that think they're celebrating the birth of Christ are actually celebrating the birth of the Antichrist. To me, that's that's your problem, not their problem. If they believe this is when baby Jesus was born, let them believe it. Uh, why are you fighting this battle? Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day. All right, so why, why are you judging people who sincerely believe Jesus, baby Jesus, was born December 25th. I, you know, I, people are making way too big of a deal out of it, in my opinion. But, all right, so that's my opinion on it. I hope I'm crystal clear. I believe he was born December 25th. Baby Jesus was born December 25th. Now, these guys, Julius Caesar, Tam, Tammuz, Nimrod, you can't prove they were born that day. And when people celebrate Christmas, they celebrate the baby Jesus, not these guys. All right, so I just I went all went all through that. So good enough. But I appreciate the comment. And what I would say to you, Joshua James, is to prove all things and hold fast to that which is true. And you wouldn't want somebody to judge you, and therefore don't judge another in respect of an holy day <clears throat> or holiday. All right, so uh, it's an interesting conversation that gets brought up every time, every year at this time of the year. Same thing with Easter. And just in case. You're unsure. I, Easter is the correct word in the Bible. If God says Easter is the fulfillment of the Passover, if that's what God says it's called, then that's what I believe. I'll get into I'll get into that in about three months, huh? All right, let's go. Ricky Jacobs. I think the people who are the angriest at once saved, always saved, are people who spent their whole lives doing good works growing up in church they take a lot of pride in that and for people to come along and say you can't lose it and your good works don't matter toward salvation oh you're just lazy well that's true I mean I what that's I mean that that's probably true as far as in regards to uh, the people that reject it or grew up in the church that would be uh, terribly shameful, uh, terribly, uh, you know, sorrowful, really. He grew up in church. You had all these people ministering to you, and you had uh, these preachers and teachers, and none of them get it. And none of them uh, know what the gospel is. And uh, there, there's a mentality that's been in the world for a long time is that uh, everybody is a good person and everybody is saved. There's many ways to be saved. You know, you don't have to believe in Jesus. You just have to do more good 
than bad and you'll be saved and you'll be okay everybody gets a participation trophy and uh, so to hell with Jesus and everything that he did for us you choose your own path believe what you want do what you want don't matter uh, and that's the mentality of the world tell me I'm wrong but the Bible says narrow is the way why is narrow the way what what's wrong with believing in Buddha right because straight is the gate narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it I mean, that's unbelievable what do you mean narrow straight is the way right let's read that these two verses I think it for me it helps enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many there be which go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it now think about this if you believe once saved always saved you are in the very small minority of churchgoers you know let alone people in the whole entire world you are in a very small minority but the alternative is to believe you have to save yourself by doing good works by being a good person if being a good person was the measure well everybody would be saved if the amount of good works that you did was a mat you know was a matter of salvation rich people would have an extreme advantage over us poor folk right the good works has nothing to do with it being a good person you could argue that it actually does have something to do with it because if you believe you're a good person you're going to hell and so in that sort of sense yeah that being a good person does matter but not the way some people most people think the fact of the matter is we are all sinners every single one of us and the fact of the matter is Jesus paid for our sins they're paid for all we have to do is believe all we have to do is have faith and the truth of the reality that we live in it's always been about faith it's never been about works you want to make an argument to all your your works are evidence of your faith okay that's fine but it still doesn't change the fact that it's always been about faith now we just read this isn't it interesting we scroll down just a little bit many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then will I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work in equity now it let me ask you this it, teaching in the name of Jesus is that inequity no it's not casting out devils is that inequity no it's not is doing many wonderful works is that inequity no it's not so why do you suppose Jesus says depart from me ye that work in equity well the the obvious that the answer should be obvious right the obvious answer is these people were trusting and what they did and because they were trusting in what they did rather than trusting in what was done for them to save them all their works are in equity 
because they are all depending on themselves to save themselves instead of trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ who has done it all, right? It's that simple. There's no other way to look at it. No other logical way to look at it. All right, so that's a great comment by Richie Jacobs. <clears throat> and, you know, I mean, that's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse and worse and worse until the end of the world. All right, so let's, let's read Enoch of the Nine. Now, this should be interesting. Hmm. I don't know why I'm going to bother writing this. Meanwhile, he writes a book. All right, that's like, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. But I was raised Christian. My dad has only become more religious since COVID. But I don't think Christianity or the book edited by people with agendas, the KJ4, is something to be taken too seriously or at its word at all. I'm not sure what the KJ4 is. <clears throat> now, I'm going to have to guess King James 4. I don't know what the KJ4 is. Oh, it's an asteroid? I don't know. I <laughs> I don't know what what that is. Let me let me just try to assume something here. I, I was thinking the King James Bible, but I don't think Christianity or the book edited by people with agendas, the KJ four, is something to be taken too seriously or at its word at all. The reason I assume. I have to believe this is about the Bible is because you're talking about the Bible. I said, I'm not familiar with this KJ4 stuff, though. People like the person you're chastising in the video and yourself, in my view, you are both the same, along with billions of others alive today blindly worshiping and following and believing in misinformed edited versions of the truth parts of a whole you take it parts of the whole and swear by it following a history of frankly foolish and ignorant people blindly defending something which only serves to hide greater truths from you why confine yourself to one edited book? <clears throat> Alright, so this is attack after attack after attack of the Word of God, which is pure. Alright, let's establish this. Alright. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them. O oh Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Psalm 119, thy word is very pure. Therefore thy servant loveth it. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. Okay, excuse me. If every word of God is pure, he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Now, uh, like Jesus says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Now, why is reading the Bible uh, so important? I 
Uh, have you ever thought about that? That the man of God may be burned from well, well, what's this? What's the context of three of Second Timothy three here? Let's read this. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Hold that thought. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now keep holding that first thought. Let's go back to what a lot of people wanted, the originals. Alright? And we'll go uh, when Moses was given two tables of testimony tables of stone written with the finger of God all right so just consider that man this is not from man this is not man's version there are men that corrupt the Word of God all right we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God but as of sincerity but as of God in the sight of God speak we in Christ for we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God is that not true there are all kinds of people corrupting the Word of God and look ESV is that your book for we are not like so many peddlers of God's Word except that's what the ESV does they peddle their Bible version makes them hypocrites that's not what the verse says anyways it's about corrupting the Word of God if my Bible says corrupt the Word of God then that's what God says all right, so then let's go to your NIV. Oh, you're an NIV guy. Unlike so many, we do not peddle the Word of God for profit, except they do peddle their Bible version for profit. In fact, they write or translate their Bible as so that it will be in compliance with the copyright laws. It's not based on translate. It's not based on. Uh, manuscripts at all it's based on copyright laws the same thing with the uh, NSB or the, what is that the new I forget what the what they call that now North American Standard Bible where's that at for we are not like the many peddling the Word of God except that's what they do they peddle their Bible version. In fact, Frank Logston is uh, the guy that put this thing together and he he had a a moment, if you will. Where he realized, man, this thing, this ain't right. So let's see if we can find, real quickly, his own words. Perhaps the most dramatic episode of the New Bible Movement has been the testimony of Dr. Frank Logsdon, a former pastor of the Moody Church in Chicago in the 1950s. Logsdon influenced the development of the New American Standard Bible. He had advised his friend Dewey Lockman in pursuing the translation, but came to regret it later on. His testimony was recorded prior to his death in 1987. We start on a feasibility report, and I encourage him to go ahead with it. I'm afraid I'm in trouble with the Lord. I encourage you to go ahead with it. We, we, we laid the groundwork. I wrote the format. I, I helped to interview some of the 
translators. I sat with the translators. I wrote the preface. When you see the New American Standard, they're my words. Well, when I got my copy, you know, I never really looked at it. I just took for granted it was done as we started it, you know, until some of my friends across the country began to learn that I had some part in it, and they started saying, what about this? What about this? What about this? You had part in it. What, what about this? What about this? I got the place, and I said to Anne, I'm in trouble. I can't refute these arguments. They're, it's wrong. It's terribly wrong. It is frightfully wrong. And what am I going to do about it? Well, I went through heart search, uh, some real soul searching for about four months. I don't know, I think about four months. And I sat down and wrote the most difficult letter of my life, I think. And I wrote to my friend Dewey, and I said, Dewey, I can no longer ignore these criticisms I'm hearing, and I can't refute them. The only thing I can do, and dear brother, I have nothing against you, and I can witness at the judgment seat of Christ. And before men were ever told that you were 100% sincere, he's not schooled in language or anything, he's just a businessman. He did the promoting, he had the money, he did the promoting. So I, I said, he did it conscientiously. He wanted absolutely right, he thought it was right. But nevertheless, I said, I must, under God, renounce every attachment to the New American Standard. Yeah, and, so, and this guy put this thing together and he denounced uh, the entire translation because it was corrupt. We already got a perfect Bible. It really makes no sense to try to to be better than the King James Bible because the King James Bible is the perfect pure word of God in the English language. So we'll go back here. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, of course, you're going to get uh, Einstein coming along and saying, no, no, don't read the Bible, don't trust the Bible, don't believe the Bible, because we don't want you to have use of the Spirit of God, right? I mean, they don't want you to be perfect. They want you to be imperfect. Just watch your HBO, your Cinemax, and your Netflix, and whatever nudie shows that are on TV, you know. And so, uh, what was that? What was the other verse I was going to share here? Oh, being confident. How about being confident? Can we be confident? in the Word of God. Can we be confident in anything? Being confident of this very thing that He which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now if you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands how can you be confident in it? What are you putting your confidence in? Do you have to be confident in something? Are you confident in yourself? Didn't we just talk about that? Are you confident that you can save yourself? And that's what these people in Matthew 7, that's what they believe. They had confidence that because they were prophesying in the name of Jesus and casting out devils in the name of Jesus and in the name of Jesus, they were doing many wonderful works. They had confidence in themselves. But they were not saved. They are not saved. Your confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Key word right there. He. Being confident of this very thing that He, which has begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. It's He that has begun a good work in you. We can be confident. That the Spirit of God is in us that are saved. And we will continue to grow and grow. And we can be confident in the Bible that we hold in our hands. That it is the pure, true words of God. Now, let, let, let me continue. There's a book here. Let's go to chapter 20 here. 
Chapter 26. People like to... Per okay. Why confine yourself to one edited book? Again, this attack on the Word of God. There are so many other fantastic Stephen King novels and Harry Potter books and sources out there that expand your imagination on providing history and insight into our origin. Origin, origin, where have I heard that before? Origin, origin. I gotta think here a second. Origin, or what was that? Who am I thinking of here? Charles Darwin. Origin on the origin of species. That's what it was. I I knew it was something, man. Couldn't remember. Origin of species. This is the belief that. You are a super monkey, and you're going to evolve into a green Martian. Now, I'm not kidding you. That's what it, that's what they say. That's what am I doing here? I want to. Can we look at this? Can anybody see this? There we go. Preservation. Let's see. The origin of species by means of the strongest shall survive. That means go kill people. All right, so if you got, you know, people you don't agree with, then naturally select them and kill them. That's what that means. The preservation of favored races. In other words, let's favor the white man over the Indian. All right, let's kill the Indians. Let's ignore them. Natural selection. Naturally, we're going to select who we're going to kill. Preservation of favored races. Now how come this didn't get what do they call that? The cancel the cancel you know cancel culture or whatever that you know that it's been going on for the last couple of years. How come this isn't getting attention? Preservation of favored races? Are you kidding me? Let's cancel this book. Come on man. Well it's already been canceled in my book. Alright so, I mean, we could read these books, couldn't we? We could, uh, yeah, super, that's what they teach you in school, man. You're forced to learn this brainwashing, that you are a monkey. And when you get older, you're going to be a super monkey. And the, your hope is that someday you'll evolve into a green little Martian. That's their reality. But that is not the true reality and if that's what you just believe just be honest man if that's what you believe you believe you're a super monkey just admit it man and just say hey I'm a super monkey and then I wish you'd do me a favor and wear a cape I honestly do you're a super monkey you, you ought to be wearing a super cape uh, there are so many fantastic BS is out there yet you choose to disregard all of that I yeah I'm disregarding these books that teach that I'm a super monkey yeah yeah it's true even though I was forced to learn it as a child as a man I disregard it I don't believe it I teach against it and I'm passionate it about it. What is that one verse I'm thinking of? When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. And the enemy come in and taught me that I was a monkey. A super monkey. But when I became a man, I put away childish things so I no longer believe I'm a super monkey now uh, it took me about 31 years to finally uh, you know get to the point to where I could call myself a man really 
I still act like a child sometimes, but that's a whole nother thing. Um, you know, it, it really is another thing. Now maybe I should talk about this. Maybe I should talk about this. Why do I sometimes come off child in a childlike sort of way? Jesus said unto them, Suffer little children, forbid them not to come unto me, for such, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me receive not me, but him that sent me. All right, there's another verse I'm looking for. Bear with me. Maybe this is it. Maybe I already, maybe I already, uh, the other one was good enough. But suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Suffer little children to come unto me, forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. I think the word I'm looking for is just child, not children. If I could find this, I don't know if it's possible. Uh, the for whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receive me. No, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Okay, so I can't find ex the exact uh, verse that I'm looking for. But uh, the uh, the idea is that hey, we are that the the children that we see. The childlike um, attitude, the childlike uh, fun that they have. They're always having fun. They always have joy. They're always eager to learn and eager to please. These little children are closer to the kingdom of God than we are. You know, those of us that are old, bitter, angry always not having fun complaining you know like me you know when I was a child I was always having fun right enjoying life learning exploring that sort of thing and that sort of mentality right here it is I found it I wasn't even close before and verily I say unto you except you be converted and become as little children you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven and become as little children. That's having that joy, that peace, and the love for one another. Now, when you're a child, you love everybody, don't you? You get old and better and angry like me, and growling all the time, barking at people, you know. You weren't like that as a child, but it, you ought to be like that when you were a child okay because these children are closer to God than than we are in that sort of aspect right in that sort of attitude uh, typically so we ought to love everybody just like a little child loves everybody and always it's always full of joy and always trying to please one another right but in my view, Christianity is just one of more successful cults. Now, I read this before when I was still drinking coffee. And I noticed that um, he never makes any mention of Catholicism. So this person that's writing this comment here makes no distinction between Christianity and Catholicism. And that's why... You know, I constantly bring this up. It's so dangerous. The Catholicism is deceiving so many people. If I was, you know, a super monkey, I, when I was a super monkey, I looked at Catholicism, and I, yeah, I had, I have the same problems that I see these guys having. It looks like a cold, doesn't it? But uh, they're. Polar opposites. Christianity and Catholicism are polar opposites. It's almost impossible to see if you're not saved. It really is, because you just think it's all this. It's like, you know, it's like Mormonism. Oh, they believe in Jesus. Yeah. So, well, Muslims do too. Well, that's what they say, isn't it? 
but it's not what they really believe. Hinduism. Now, Hinduism is just a bunch of vain philosophy. I looked into that years and years ago, and it's nothing. It's just nothingness. It's just vain, vain, vain. Vain wisdom, vain knowledge, vain philosophy, it's just nothing. Original Judaism. We Christians are the original Judaisms. Polyistic, polyester face, I'm not sure what that is. Hinduism being the only one to go into cosmic detail fairly deeply. No, that's not true at all. Mormonism trumps everybody in that regards as, as far as your cosmic detail. Because right, they, they believe that they're going to have their own planet and that there are three different types of salvation that everybody's going to get saved. There are the super monkeys, the Mormons. They're going to get the best salvation. They're going to be able to have a whole planet full of women to have sex with. And then there are Christians who will get and more of the same. And then there are unbelievers who are going to be put on one of those planets and they're going to be black. And they're going to be cursed. All right. And that, well, that's... Now if they changed it in the last 20 minutes, I don't know, but that's what they used to teach. And that's what they'll tell you. Well, the black part, they're a little bit uh, nervous about. Uh, they so they try to get vague on that aspect the unbelievers though without question in the Mormon faith the unbelievers will go to their own planet and be cursed anyway who cares I'm mean, the only reason I know that is because I have relatives I've spent a lot of time talking to various Mormons so who cares Alright, so, where was I at? In my view, those faiths do the best job of stating the reality of things. Oh yeah, of course they do. You're a super monkey. That's the reality. Yeah, yeah. you're doing the best job. Before things go off the rails. And we're all, my red, I think that's supposed to be mired. You don't put a Y there. It's M I. I, I don't know, what do I know? I think that we're all mired in conversations. If that's my red, I have no idea. We're all mired in conversations that have very little to do with reality. I'm sorry for you and your people there. Of course, that is only my view. Yeah, of course. In conclusions, I have come to after decades. Man, we're talking hundreds of years of investigation and looking into various religions in human history. Well, how about this? You spend all this time watching Cinemax. How about reading the Bible? It takes five minutes to read one chapter. Is it going to hurt you? You'll spend 45 minutes or an hour and a half. You'll spend two hours watching your Playboy channel. You can't spend five minutes reading the Bible? Think about it. Where's your priorities in life? Man, do you really honestly seek the truth? I am open to being wrong and better f informed. But the ship has long since sailed for the view that Christianity and the KJ4 are the purveyors of one true faith. So uh, you're cursing yourself forever. That's too bad, man. It really is. Because I want you to think about this. What? What's your name again? Enoch of the Nine. Is that your real name, or is that? Anyways, I want you to think about this, man. If you even make it this far, is how are you going to save yourself? Because you know, the day is coming when you are going to die. It's unavoidable. At some point, man, you have to sit down and realize, yeah, that day is coming. 
It's unavoidable. It comes for everybody. And on that day when you die, man, what happens? Is that the end of it? Is that the end of everything? Isn't there more to life than death? And for me, I guess I was fortunate. Fortunate to run into an individual when I was 23 years old that said that there's more to life than what we see. And this guy had boils all up and down his arms and on his neck and on his face. He was the most grotesque looking human being I'd ever seen in my entire life. I spent less than 10 minutes with him. My buddy that I was with, we gave him a ride to his house or to a church or something. I'm not sure what it was. And he told me this. He says, well, uh, if you don't believe in the Bible, now is the time. Because all the prophecies are being fulfilled. And I asked him about his condition. He told me that he had actually flatlined three times. The first time by electrocution. That's why he had those boils all over his body. He'd been electrocuted. And his skin had boiled up all on his neck and on his arms. Unbelievable. And then two surgeries after that. And two of the surgeries after that, he flatlined during those surgeries. And he described for me what it was like when he was flatlining. And I, thought, I just thought that was amazing. And then I was telling, I was talking to mom. Mom had that same experience. I didn't know that at that time. My mom had surgery and she flatlined. And I found a letter from a university that wanted to do follow-up interviews with her about her experience. And she told me she, she didn't know. And this was at the time when my mom was not a believer. She told me she didn't know what happens after life but she knows she said there's more there's more to what we see there's more to what we know there's something there she can't explain it and it was essentially I got the same feeling that I got from that gentleman in Minneapolis there's something more to life after we die death is not the end so begs the question, how can you save yourself? What happens after you die? Because you've sinned. We've all sinned. Every single person that has ever lived is a sinner. How are you going to live forever? knowing that you're evil you can't you know God won't allow it you've got one opportunity man and your opportunity is today it's right now one opportunity tomorrow is not yet promised and you know what I could tell you or I could not even tell you what you have to do to be saved you know it inherently because that's how God made you you didn't have to hear it you just know it instinctually we all do we are all creatures made by the living God and Jesus is the living God and Jesus was manifest in the flesh and Jesus took on sin to himself. And he paid for sin. Not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. So now that whoever believes in him, no sin shall be imputed on him. Therefore, we have everlasting life in Him.
because not only did he die offering his body he rose back to life and ascended to heaven and we that follow him will do the same so there's a great conversation in John chapter 3 this is the one that really got me to thinking back in 1996 the conversation Jesus is having with Nicodemus and, Ni and Nicodemus is supposed to be uh, one of the smartest guys around and Jesus says verily verily I say unto thee except the man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God Nicodemus said how can a man be born when he is old can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born huh Jesus answered verily verily I say unto thee except the man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God we are all born of the water you know when the water breaks that means the baby's coming we are all born of the water but we are not all born of the spirit that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel not that I said unto thee ye must be born again alright so I, to me that was a real eye-opener because that makes so much sense I could not cannot ignore it and that played on me for a long long time until I finally gave in I realized you know what I'm a fool I'm a damn fool because I doubted the Bible I have doubted Jesus Christ I thought I was a super monkey I was considering going out by myself Kate but like I said that guy in Minneapolis with the boils all over he been electrocuted and flatlined three times he told me if you don't believe the Bible now is the time because the prophecies of the Bible are being fulfilled the problem I had back then 1993 I didn't know what the Bible said so I set out to read it and this is what I read and I couldn't ignore it so there's a Bible verse here the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart oh buddy is that true so you want to tell people don't read the Bible don't trust the Bible well those are words that only come from the devil they don't come from God think about that Enki and Enlil are those words in the Bible Enki what what is that Enki are you serious Enki Z not there Enlil Bar not there so it doesn't say our Satan and Jehovah okay that's according to your tradition and your custom not according to the Bible they there we go they themselves are merely more advanced green little men from Mars God still exists of course but beyond our comprehension and not concerned with interfering in our lives or what happens to us on a day-to-day -day basis well that's a weird God that you worship there buddy it's a weird God man 
Because the God that I worship, he is in me and I in him. And because he's in me, I have eternal life right now. I'm never going to die. Whosoever believeth in me, though he should die, yet shall he live. Who? What is that? What is that verse? Oh, you know, I don't know. What is that verse? Oh my goodness, I, I don't know. Man, imagine if I didn't know the Bible. Whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Life is all around us, more than us, almost imperceptible to us. Studying the Bible, it's just a start, a box. There are many other boxes, of course. We live outside of those boxes. In a 3D plane, and you've been watching too many movies, man, when you make that statement right there. You don't get that from the Bible, you get that from Hollywood. A larger puzzle lay before us, and we are beckoned to solve it. Yeah, yeah, you know what? You can't solve that puzzle. But the good news is that puzzle has already been solved for us. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. All we have to do is put our faith in Him. Unfold the boxes to see the larger picture from. There is no shame in learning. No shame. No shame in learning. Beware lest any man spoil you spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit no shame in learning go ahead and learn what he's what this guy's saying is don't learn from the bible he he's he gone over that multiple times he can't trust the bible but go learn about other gods go after these other gods isn't that what, he, what he's saying go after these other gods Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. Right, so, their daughters go a whoring after their gods. And make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. You shall not go after other gods. And this person here is saying, go after these other gods. All right, just put the, all you have to do is connect the dots, put the pieces of the puzzle together, and you see what's happening here. RH blood type. Adamo? Adamu? Telemeters? Beep, 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 beep. Blah, 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 blah. In our DNA, exceed. But sure, stop at the Bible. Obviously, that's not all there is to it. No idea, man. What the hell are you talking about? He is made of all nations one blood to dwelleth upon the earth. What is that? And has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. One blood. Never mind the mountains of knowledge that came before. Yeah, never mind the mountains of knowledge and BS that came before or the stories that simply copied or edited or censored for, from you. So the truth is censored from you. So you don't have the truth. This is what he's saying. That he has the truth, and we've got to put our trust in Enoch of the Nine. In that sense, what you're saying? That you can't find the truth in the Bible, you got to find it in the devil. In order to provide us a level of understanding to keep you at a certain degree of ignorance, to benefit those that rule us. So, uh, 
that, that's just stupid. For me to have peace in my heart and to know that I have everlasting life has nothing at all to do with President Joe Biden or President Barack Obama or President George Bush. It has, has nothing to do at all with those guys. Not Nothing at all. The fact that I have everlasting life is entirely separate. I have the Spirit of God in me. has nothing to do with the snake pit in Washington, D.C. Nothing at all. All right, so, hey, thanks, uh, Nick. Appreciate that. And Alex, uh, appreciate that. Uh, and, oh, this is an interesting verse here. Isaiah 66. I will, or I also will choose their delusions and bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. All right, so that's a great comment, great verse. Both of these are great. Let me read this and I'll finish. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Enoch of the Nine. Joshua James. You got one opportunity, buddy. And time's running out. The only chance you got, man, is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's done it all for you. And you know it. Now, without him... Without the Lord Jesus Christ, you think you're going to be able to save yourself? 